Every day is just one heartbeat away from a headline. This is Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi, featuring retired FBI Special Agent Jennifer Coffin-Daffer. The case against Richard Allen, the alleged Delphi murderer, the trial is uh, getting closer and closer, and Judge Gull, as she does, denies a lot of things, <laughs> to put it lightly, from the defense. This is a big one, though. She has denied uh, Allen's defense team from introducing the theory at trial of Odinism or any sort of cult-related exercises or evidence uh, into the trial as a possible third-party defense, limiting the ability of what they're going to argue in court for Richard Allen. Joining me to discuss Jennifer Coffendaffer, retired FBI special agent, host of the podcast, Break the Case with Jennifer Coffendaffer. It's also on YouTube. Get it wherever you download podcasts as well. Uh, Jennifer, what does this mean to this whole case now that uh, we're not uh, going to see Odinism brought up in court? Well, the defense took two punches to the gut. They took a punch last week when she said all confessions come in, all confessions come in. And then they took a huge punch this week when they said third party culprits, they're all out. <laughs> so, I mean, at this point, it's, you know, what is there left to defend? Um, yeah, I think I think, it. you know, I listen. I don't know whether Richard Allen committed this crime, mm -hmm. but geez, is there information pertaining to other third party culprits that I just believe? I, I mean, I, from a legal standpoint, from every standpoint, that this should be a jury consideration. Yeah. If they didn't have anything, they were just completely throwing mud up against the wall. If I, I mean, they have over a hundred page motion regarding all the intricacies of their theory. Yeah. I'm not saying I even buy the theory, but let's take it a step further and look at the individuals she specifically talked about. Ron Logan. Mm -hmm. Ron Logan, there's an FBI affidavit that says probable cause that Ron Logan was involved in killing Abby and Libby, that his phone was there. We know Richard Allen's phone wasn't there mm -hmm. uh, after the geofencing. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's a long, involved affidavit. My point is, is that as a defense attorney, I think I should be able to put that in. This is what these <laughs> FBI agents all said and what they yes. found in their case. How could you not at least have the jury consider it? Now, the jury can say, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't him. We think that, you know, look, he's confessed, but put it all out there. I, I feel like it's sort of hiding the discovery that the jury who are the fact finders are supposed to be making. I, I'm surprised. It, it feels like it just continues to be steered in the exact direction that Gull wants it to be. But Gull's not the decider here. Gull's the judge. She's the referee here to make sure everybody plays fair and it seems, seems she's very slanted towards one team, uh, which, again, this goes back to the argument of he basically has a get a trial free card in this. But it's just going to keep dragging this all out for the families, for the everyone involved, for Richard Allen. Why not try this thing fairly? I mean, it just it, it just defies logic at this point of how skewed this trial is going to be when there is a lot of pieces of evidence out here. It's not just you know, internet rumors and such, there's a lot of beef to these things. Well, one of the other items that, uh, you know, I would use as a defense attorney was Keegan Klein. Mm -hmm. Keegan Klein, we know Anthony Schatz had communications uh, the morning or our communications just prior to their murder. Mm -hmm. We know that. That is not that is unequivocal. And then we also know that there was enough cause and concern that when Keegan Klein said he knew where items of evidence was, they pulled him out of out of jail. I have always said, because I know people who haven't worked in law enforcement, whenever you get somebody out, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You have to have it signed up uh, off on at the highest levels. And uh, because you're now taking responsibility for somebody that's supposed to be behind bars, it's very unusual, let me say, Tony. And so at least at one point, either law enforcement was completely duped, which maybe they were, yeah. 
or they thought that there was information that he might have known through that shop's account. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because I've always said, how in the world was this just divinely happening? Mm -hmm. In other words, they just happened to be off school. They happened to be there. And Richard Allen happened to be there at the exact time they were there so that he could murder them. How how did he know that there would be two vulnerable girls there that he could control? And was it only him? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I don't know. The whole case to me is so problematic. And I just feel like the jury needs to see it all. All right. True crime addicts. Let's cut the crap. You're knee deep in the gory details of your favorite podcast. When suddenly a commercial hits like a bad meal. Seriously? You deserve better. Upgrade to True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts, where you can binge without those annoying ads. Plus, get extended interviews that go deeper into the darkness and early access to episodes so you can be the first to know. It's like trading up from fast food to fine dining, but with more blood. So, go ahead. Search for True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe and feast on the good stuff.